them. I don't mind even taking the toughest questions. But ultimately, football will be the winner. That is, uh, it's not about um, hating court. It's not about hating George. It's about loving Ghana and what Ghana stands for in football. Ghana is very, very, it's one of the very integral countries in terms of football development in the continent. Um, I'm not going to go back into history about what Ghana has achieved and what Ghana will achieve. Um, I was just talking to, I mean, I just, when I was seeing George off just now, I told him that you can, what Morocco did today is Ghana would have done it just penalty. You know, in 2010, I was in the idea, I was shattered, and um, I felt very, very bad, but God knows best. That's what I keep saying, you know. So I just believe that um, I came in principally um, on behalf of uh, the FIFA president, Gianni Fantino, and also the, and the CAF president, uh, Patrice Mosepe. And um, they will be monitoring what has been going on in Ghana. And you should also know that um, I represent 22 African countries as a council member. I represent all the Anglophone countries. And uh, <clears throat> I, it's, my, it's my responsibility or oversight, as you may call it, for me to make sure that there is peace and um, there is strict adherence to our statutes. Because FIFA does not, the only Bible FIFA understands is the statute. And that I can tell you for free. The only thing CAP understands is the statute. That's the Bible of FIFA. And statute also encapsulates what our internal due processes are when it comes to the electoral code and also the elections, elective congresses. So everything is clearly stated. There are procedures before you, before you, are, before you are eligible to run. If you meet those procedures, then you can. But if you say you met and you were de-emphasized, there are bills on you as a football stakeholder to take it upon yourself, not to jeopardize or ridicule your country by following the due process to the end. So to me, I've come. I met with the Honorable Minister for hours. We deliberated. Then we also had to call in the incumbent president, Court Akrako into that meeting. I also met with the chairman, the parliamentary committee, the select committee on sports, another amazing personality. And see, one thing I've gathered beyond what I came here to do is that everybody's driven by passion in football in Ghana. You have that as a very potent weapon to build and develop football, but not to kill and erase it from our memories. So, um, I will do my human extreme in ensuring that there's peace before I leave, I will, so that I can report back uh, uh, to my bosses and also to both ESCOs. Because we have seen a lot, and I want to, as much as possible, avoid anything that will bring any form of ridicule or opprobrium to CAF, especially the countries that I represent in the council. I knew George long before I knew Court. You know, George and I worked in a committee. I was president of the AFCON committee. George was a, a very key member. Whenever I needed him, he contributed immensely. I'm not going to tell you lies. I came here because I need to tell you what it is, you know. But what Court has brought to global football and African football, there was a time after the incident about five years ago, we, Ghanaians, I call myself we, when nose diving in terms of respect, in terms of uh, people, want, people don't want to see Ghana. But within a very short time, because God carries himself like a typical Ghanaian, it's my personal opinion, and he won everybody within a few years. The kind of respect that he has in CAF, in FIFA, that's why I'm here. You know what it means to travel at this time and all the stuff. So. He has built so much respect for this country. It's a personal opinion. You know, and I believe, because he has built so much respect, Calf caught as president of the Federation, will not want to do anything that will jeopardize his name, his integrity. If you follow the latter, in terms of the procedures, then, and of course, it's also independent because there's an electoral committee there's also the appeals committee. There's a shrine 
in the electoral courts. You know? So we don't want, I was here five years ago to set up a normalization committee. My prayer is that that should never be our portion in Ghana again. And I believe when I'm leaving Ghana eventually, football ultimately will be the winner. And that's my prayer. I've had a long discussion with George Afriye today. And we are meeting again tonight after this. I had to leave him to come for this, you know. And I just want us to see a situation whereby we can work in harmony. Because the tax ahead is qualifying for the World Cup. Trust me, no group is easy. Without harmony, it will be suicidal. Because a drop in point can cost you that qualification. So, but you need harmony. I'm not here to preach that. I'm just saying it as a consigned Ghanaian. I'm here to arbitrate and see that, according to FIFA, we, we stick to the rules with our statutes and ensure compliance and ensure that everything we do, we do according to dictates of the statutes, which is very, very important. So ultimately, when I'm leaving, to answer your question, I believe and I pray that football will be the winner. And like I told you, I didn't mean words. I've known George for a very long time right from my day one as president of NFF. And he was a very vocal member in my committee, when I was president of AFCON committee. So he's not somebody you want to wish away. He's not somebody you just want to call names. Do you understand? So I'm here. And I've also told you the value what has brought to, especially recording, global and continental recording of your of football in this continent. All of us here, we have a role to play. The media is a very critical stakeholder in football development. That's why we go to FIFA Stadium. Or what we call Kaide Charge. If you look at, if you want to host a FIFA tournament, it's only the media that have all, almost nine entrances in and out of the stadium. The VIP have only one. Media Tribune, media this, media that, Media this, press this, press that. Because of the importance that you guys play, you guys have an integral role because fueling of crisis is done by the media. Reducing that burning of fire is done by the media. If you think you are going to hurt court by saying negatives about him, you are killing football in Ghana. The same thing with George you must look at issues from the perspective of integrity. That's the gospel I preach to them back home every day. There was a time I told them, hate Amadou Penic, but don't hate Nigerian football. Because if you hate Nigerian football, who suffers? Everybody, stakeholders, even the kids that want to play football tomorrow. And that's the gospel I preach to everybody. Football must always be the winner. Thank you. Okay, if I didn't answer it, well, tell me I'm ready. <laughs> uh, we have not come to that discussion with him, but the judge that I know is a football person, and football persons don't take court, don't take, um, don't take case toward civil court. It is an aberration in football globally, because as a football person, judge is not new. I can tell you that George is not naive when it comes to, you know, but we see when you are pushed, when you feel that you are being pushed to the wall, you can, and people around you might decide to say, this is what you want to do. But at the end of the day, who suffers? Who suffers? It's Ghana football. Who suffers? Our qualification. Who suffers? We can't lose still African games next year. There are a lot to lose. So he has not mentioned that to me. If he mentions it to me, I'll tell him the application and he knows. No country is immune from sanction, from punishment. You know, 
we just fought a tough battle to get Kenya out of it. The same thing with Zimbabwe. Five years ago, we had a very rancorous issue here in Ghana. Today, there have been a lot of regrets because of those issues. But I can tell you very emphatically that at the end of the day, I believe we are going to have all these things fully and robustly resolved. I will not leave if those issues are not resolved. We need to come as a family. We have, we have too many. The goal, the, the goal to be achieved is very noble, even though we know that the road to success is never easy. You see, beautiful roses, they always grow on thorny plants. But when you come to the end, everybody will smile. You know, you, I, I, I look at that goal we missed in 19, 2010. You know, Ghana had the opportunity of winning the World Cup. But God knows best. So I just want to say that you people have a major role to play. The judge I know is a football person. And football persons don't take cases to regular court. The regular court are institutions of government which we respect. But if you are if you are signed up to the FIFA rules, they must also obey FIFA rules. It's like Ghana as a country being a member of the United Nations. It's a charter. It's your choice. You know, to be a member of this body. So also are the medical, all the associations. So when you are signed on, there are certain rules that you must abide by. And that's exactly what is beyond the president of your federation. It's beyond the executive committee. So if you obey the rules, then you are home and dry. What are the rules? The statute is clear as crystal. So, well, like I said, I believe whatever it is, we'll be able to we'll resolve it. People can be pushed to the wall for X, Y, Z reasons. Let's look at those X, Y, Z reasons and see how we can nip it in the bud. There can be compromise here and there. They can be accommodating, but let us make football the winner. I'm also telling you people, this, we manage. it's not just this elective congresses. All the elective congresses in Africa, we, 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 we see them, you know, all the, we, we, we have, um, um, we are where we picture and see everything as they unfold. So Ghana is not even strange. We, we've seen all the, uh, what is going on, and we are following very religiously. And you see, the focus will be here. The focus will be in Ghana on Thursday. So uh, other my colleagues are coming, you know. My, the president of the Nigerian Power Federation is also coming. And you see, there, there are so many interests in Ghana football. Why is that so? because Ghana is one of the greatest footballing nations out of this continent. So all of us must put our hands together to make it greater. You know, there's a lot that have happened in the last four years. A lot. <laughs> COVID took over two years. Uh, over two years of not just our precious time, every business is went down. This is not sui generis to Ghana alone. Practically, but in spite of that, one thing that I know, I can tell you 100%, which is very key in terms of football politics, association, harmony, he's been able to launch himself within a very short time to that top echelon. Today, he's the president of Afobi, he's my boss in Afobi. He says, sit down, I sit down. You know what that means? He commands a lot of respect. When he speaks, everybody wants to listen. Just after the incident of five years ago, four years ago. So he's somebody that is so well respected. He's been able to relaunch Ghana back into global reckoning, global respect. That's qualifying for the World Cup against all odds. You know, so I'm not here to campaign for him. Because even qualifying or not qualifying to me, is not how you judge the success or the rise of a president. Because his football is played among two countries. Italy, the defending champions of Euros, 
they did not qualify for the World Cup. But three days thereafter, after they were eliminated, they played a friendly game. And the country embraced them. Africa should start emulating that. Provided the Federation ensures that everything they needed to do in harmony with the ministry they did. When you put scored a goal against Nigeria, they didn't look at the keeper in Nigeria. They were looking at me as the president. Those are the kind of things that should stop. Because it's not, if you are building a foundation, it can take you four years to build a foundation. But eight years to see some nurturing into that foundation. And at the end of the day, you can decide to say you've been able to achieve this. Because you cannot, even in 100 years, you cannot achieve your totality of your goals. That's what I say to people in government. So to me, it has done it has done exceedingly well. He has taken that respect Ghana has always been having. He has relaunched it and he has made it higher. You know, he's a football personality. You know, and I have very high regard for him. I can tell you that. I have spoken to him. There are things that are that I cannot divulge at the moment, but he didn't come to say that it is a do or die. He didn't come to say that it's either me or nobody. You know, he, of course, he will ventilate his anger, which he did. And I listened. And I was able to tell him some things from a brother to brother. And I know George, he listens. Even though he feels agitated, he feels pained, he, he might be livid. But if a football lover will not want football to die within his coma, his, uh, his environment. So I can be talking in ambiguity, calculated, but you should be able to draw an inference from what I've said. But I can tell you, George loves Ghana. He will not do anything to jeopardize. Maybe people might be telling him X, Y, Z, but ultimately, he loves Ghana and he also knows the repercussion of going to. I, I just see it as being speculative because I've not seen any document. I've not seen any correspondence to that effect. We see all those things in Nigeria. People will throw anything to social media just to create anxiety. So I don't want to believe George will do that because a football personality don't take If you take, somebody is taking your land, you can take it to Koto. Somebody is stealing or raping your daughter or doing anything, yes. But to take football issue to court is an aberration according to our statutes. Liverpool cities in the world. But if you go to those cities, the only stay you. As saintly as Jesus Christ, people call him name. So you cannot do anything 100% perfection. And under his own last four years, of course, everybody knows what COVID did to them. And in spite of that, if you look at the rejuvenation between when Ghana an early exit from the World Cup, Nations Cup, and qualifying for the World Cup, where nobody gave Ghana any hope. And even Ghana going to the World Cup, they didn't go there to mess up Ghana as a country. They also brought their head out. So it's not that. Then also look at what is going on. The, your, your, your women's team, there's a team in the, uh, in the, in the, in the league. You know, they, you know, it's the strongest team. They came to Nigeria again and qualify from there, you know? So let me tell you something. Eh? When you're trying to build a foundation, you need time to build a foundation. And like, I'm, I'm not here campaigning for anybody, but I know, as, like you said, like as a leader, you know, I've held all those positions. When I came into Nigeria football, the first day, I told myself, why did I come into this place? Yeah, we needed to buy Jesse. Buy. My general secretary brought a memo to buy Jesse. We had just won the Nations Cup in 2013. This was in 2014. We had that they had just left. Why did they leave? I told myself, if Adidas would go, I would get the best. And that's why we have Nike today. When we got in, I said, wow. Funding was 
less than uh, sponsorship from our corporate partners in Nigeria board then, almost minus zero. Okay. What do we need to do? You have to do build a strategy. Got PwC as our auditors, got the financial, financial derivatives as, so that people can now start seeing something different happening. PwC with NFS, because they have a name, partners started coming in. We started going around. When I was leaving, 90 pieces, 80 pieces self funding. I'm not saying it. If you go to their website, you see our audited reports. So it's not just on the field. Uh, Brian is calling me the president of NFF. On the field, participation and winning, but also what you have done off the field that affect things on the field. Do you understand what I'm saying? And those are the things people will start seeing manifesting. It's not just waking up one day and say, the junior teams, even if they don't qualify, but they have, they have the right ages. It's developmental. Those tournaments are developmental. And today, we have a president that was a key member of my cabinet. He was one of the persons that could look me in the eyes and say, President, you cannot do this. And one day, I never did what he said I couldn't do. Because he was speaking on behalf of a mem some members of my executive committee. That's how we do it. So today I don't have any regret in being there. We have that relationship, very cordial. It's the first time in a very long time in Nigeria where you have a successful and so working in harmony as if they are brothers. So why would Nigeria have a group where what you say two heads are better than one? So I can tell you that he has done very well. You were not the one else who said that. I've known George far longer than I knew, than I know uh, because George worked with me in my committee in AFCON, and I know what he's capable of.